In this video, we're going to learn about colligative properties. Uh, first, we'll learn the definition of colligative properties. Then we're going to learn two specific colligative properties. We'll learn about freezing point depression and then boiling point elevation. A colligative property is a property of matter that's going to depend on the number of solute particles in a solution, or in other words, that are dissolved in a solution, and it's not going to depend on the type of solute particle. Now, just as a refresher, when we say solute particles, we mean adding something into a solvent. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm putting some salt into water. And so water would be the solvent, and salt would be the solute. So when we're talking colligative property, we're talking about the amount of solute particles that we can dissolve into the solvent. Now, together, they're going to form a solution. Now there's two types of solutes that we can dissolve into a solvent. The first type is called a non-electrolyte, and a non-electrolyte is going to be something that does not conduct electricity. Generally, it's going to be a covalent compound, or in other words, a molecular compound. We know that this right here, this is glucose, and we know that this is a molecular compound because there are no metals, it's all non-metals. So when this dissolves, it would start off as a solid, and when it mixes with water, it's going to turn into something that's aqueous. In other words, it's dissolved in water. And so I just change up the symbol here, and I just put a little AQ that represents that this is now dissolved in water. So with this type of non-electrolyte, I end up with a kind of one-to-one -one ratio. I take one thing, I dissolve it, I end up with one thing that's dissolved. Now with an electrolyte, we're generally going to have an ionic compound. So this is calcium chloride, and I know this is ionic because it has a metal and a non-metal. So when this dissolves, it's going to actually split apart into its different ions. This one does not split apart because it's a molecule and it's bonded covalently, all non-metals. This one has metals and non-metals, and so there's ions that are connected to each other. So I'm going to split this apart over on the other side, and I have one calcium, and calcium has a 2 plus charge, and I have two chlorine ions. I know that because there's a little 2 here that tells me there's two of those chlorines, and chlorine has a minus 1 charge. And then I just write in the little symbol AQ to say that these ions are now dissolved in water, and I have two of those chlorines. So this type of uh, solute, the electrolyte solute, it's going to conduct electricity, and that's because of these charges here. are going to allow that electricity to flow through those ions. And this one compound right here, instead of just giving me one particle, it's actually giving me three different ions. I get one calcium, and I get those two chlorines. So it's kind of a one to three ratio. So I'm going to get more solute particles with an electrolyte than I will with a non-electrolyte. Now you can review the lesson on uh, how things dissolve if you want to look at where do those different charges come from and why does that split apart. Now the reason we have to distinguish between these two types is because if I took a one molar solution of glucose, that's this stuff right here, and I dissolved that, I took one molar and I dissolved that, I would end up with, well, one molar of the dissolved form. Over on this side, if I were to make a one molar solution of calcium chloride, I would actually end up with three molar solution of ions because it's a three to one ratio here. When this splits apart, I can just count them up. There's one calcium, two chlorines. It gives me three things. I'm going to get a three molar solution. So as far as colligative properties go, colligative properties are dependent on the amount of solute. This one over here is going to give me three times the amount of solute. So it's really important to remember as we move forward and look at the different colligative properties. So we're going to look at two. Here's the first one. It's called the freezing point depression. And this says that the more solute dissolved in a solution, the lower the freezing point of the solution. Now when water freezes, well, let's say when water, before water freezes, we would have all these water molecules kind of moving around in a solution pretty rapidly, not really sticking together, but they're kind of loosely attracted um, because all things are attracted with intermolecular forces. Now as they freeze, they're going to slow down. And as they slow down, they're going to start connecting to each other and locking in place. And this is going to happen with water when it hits zero degrees Celsius. 
And so at zero degrees Celsius, we say we've reached the freezing point because water molecules are going to stick together and lock in place. Now if I add some solute particles in here, and so here's a couple of ions, they're going to kind of get in the way as these particles are slowing down and trying to connect to each other. We have these solute particles kind of moving in place and not allowing these water particles to start coming close to each other and connecting. And so they're going to have to slow down even more to kind of bump these things out of the way so that they can connect to each other. Maybe these particles might move into the middle. So we'd have to slow them down more because these particles are kind of getting into the way. To slow them down, we would have to get to a lower temperature. And so maybe by adding a few solute particles, we might lower the freezing point of water to negative 5 degrees Celsius. And this is what we do in the wintertime when we spread salt on the roads. We're trying to lower the freezing point of water, and so we would melt the ice with that salt. Now we can calculate the freezing point uh, depression or the change in freezing point using this equation right here. This says that the change in the freezing point is going to be equal to the freezing point constant. And this is a value that's specific to the type of solvent. So for water, the freezing constant is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. And that's just specific to water. That's always going to be the number for the freezing constant. And then M is going to refer to the concentration of the solute which is molality, and this stands for the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. All right, let's go ahead and try using this equation to solve a problem. So this says, determine the freezing point of a solution that contains 100 grams of glucose in one kilogram of water, and then they give us the freezing constant for water. So here's the equation we're going to use, and I always like to list the information that I know, the stuff that's given to me. It says that there's 100 grams of glucose in one kilogram of water, and then they also give us the freezing constant. It's asking us to determine the freezing point of the solution. So first off, the freezing constant is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal, and then I'm given the kilograms of solvent, which in this case is one kilogram, and then I'm also told the amount of solute, which is 100 grams. Now I want to calculate the molality, that's this little m, and that's going to be the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Now I'm given the kilograms of solvent, but I'm given solute in grams, so I'm going to have to convert this into moles before I can plug it into this equation down here. Once I find this value, I can plug it in up here into this equation. Now to convert from grams to moles, we need the molar mass of glucose. And so you'd look at the periodic table and add up 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens. And so here's carbon, it weighs 12 grams per mole, so I'd multiply that by 6. Hydrogen weighs 1 gram per mole, I'd multiply that by 12, and then add it to oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole, and there's 6 of them. And so I would end up with 180. And so I'd take 100 grams and I would divide it by 180 grams per mole. In other words, multiply by 1 mole over 180 and end up with 0 0.56 moles. Now I can go ahead and plug that in and solve for the molality. So I'm going to take the moles of solute. And I'll divide that by the moles of solvent, sorry, the kilograms of solvent, which is right here, so kilograms of solvent, and I'm going to end up with 0 0.56 molal. We use this lowercase m to signify molal. Now I can plug things into my equation. I'm going to take the constant and the molality, and I'm going to end up with 1.03 degrees Celsius. Now this is the change in freezing point. That's what this delta symbol means. It's the change in freezing point. This is asking me for the actual freezing point of the solution. So we want to think about what was the original freezing point for water. That would be zero degrees. And I can subtract from that this change in freezing point. And so I'm going to end up with a freezing point of one point, negative 1 point 1.3 degrees Celsius. And there's my final answer. Let's look at one more, because this one's going to be slightly different. In this case, this was a non-electrolyte 
glucose, so it's not going to split up into more than one thing. Down here, I'm working with an electrolyte solute, so I have calcium chloride. Still working with the same equation here, and I'm still working with water as my solvent. And so I have the same freezing constant. Uh, in this case, I have one kilogram of solvent again, and the solute is 100 grams, but this time it's 100 grams of calcium chloride. So let's convert that into moles. So I have one calcium, which weighs 40 grams per mole when I look at a periodic table, and I have two chlorines, each of which weighs 35.5. Uh, so I'm going to add all that up, and I get 111 grams per mole. So I'm going to divide 100 by 111, and I'll find that there are 0 0.901 moles of solute. Now I can find the molality by taking the moles of solute, which I just found, and divide that by the kilograms of solvent, which is one kilogram, and I end up with 0 0.901 molal. Now I have to think about this electro, uh, this solute because it's an electrolyte solute, and so this is going to split apart into its ions, and I'm going to get three ions. I'll get one calcium and two chlorines, so three ions for every one. So before I take this and plug it into my equation, I'm going to multiply this by the number of ions I end up with, which is three, and so the molality of ions is going to end up being 2.70 molal. Now I have the molality and the constant. I can go ahead and plug them into the equation. So I have a freezing constant times the molality, and I'm going to end up uh, with a change in freezing point of 5.02 degrees Celsius which is going to make the actual freezing point for water change from zero. It's going to decrease by 5.02. So I'm going to end up with negative 5.02 degrees Celsius. So the key thing to remember is that it's, if it's an electrolyte solute, so an ionic compound, you need to count up the number of ions and then multiply the molality by that number of ions before plugging it in. All right, our second colligative property is boiling point elevation. This says the more solute dissolved in a solution, the higher the boiling point of a solution. And just a quick distinction, this is a non-volatile solute. And that word just means something that's not really going to evaporate. Generally, just something that's solid that we mix into something that's going to be liquid. So in this case, once again, we have our water particles. And if we want to get these things to boil, they're going to have to move faster and faster and faster until they gain enough energy to fly away from the rest of the group. Now, if we add something that's non-volatile, something that is not going to evaporate or boil very easily, so we say here's our ion. We're going to get water sticking to this ion. It's going to surround it. And so as we're heating up the water, we're making it move faster and faster and faster. If they're all kind of hanging on to something that's solid, they're not going to really want to pull away from it because this thing's not going to go anywhere. It would take a lot of energy to make it boil. And so it's going to make it more difficult for these water particles to kind of fly away and boil. So it's going to change the boiling point of water or whatever the solvent is to something that's higher than usual. So water normally boils at 100. If we start adding a bunch of non-volatile solutes in there, it might go up to say like 105 degrees Celsius. So here's the equation that we use. It looks really similar. We use a different constant. This is the boiling constant. For water, it just so happens to be 0.52 degrees Celsius per molal and we still use concentration and molality. So let's just do one problem here. This says, determine the boiling point of a solution that contains 50 grams of aluminum nitrate in 500 grams of water, and the boiling constant of water is 0.52. So here's all the information that's given to me. I'm going to go ahead and write the equation and list that information that I know. So I'm given the constant here, 0.52. I have 0.5 kilograms of solvent. I just converted grams to kilograms by dividing this by 1,000. And I have 50 grams of solute. This is aluminum nitrate. And aluminum nitrate contains this polyatomic ion. Now, this thing inside is not going to split apart. I just have to kind of memorize these polyatomic ions so I know NO3 uh, is a unit. It goes together. But when this splits apart, it's going to dissolve. It's an electrolyte uh, solute. And so I'm going to end up with four different ions because I have three of these nitrates and one of those aluminum. So I get four for one in this case. I need to convert this 50 grams 
into moles. And so there's one aluminum, that weighs 27 grams per mole. There are three nitrogens, because I have one in here, but I'm multiplying everything inside these brackets by three. So I have three nitrogens, they each weigh 14. And then I have a total of nine oxygens, because I have three times this three. So I get nine oxygens, each weigh 16. So I end up with 213 grams per mole. So I'm going to divide 50 by 213. And I'll get the moles of aluminum nitrate, which is going to be 0 0.235 moles. Now I can calculate the molality, which is going to be moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. And I end up with 0 0.47 molal. And now I need to multiply this, before I plug it in, by the number of ions. So remember that I get four ions for each of those aluminum nitrates. So I'm going to multiply this answer by four before I go ahead and plug it in. So I get 1.88 molal. Now let's go ahead and plug in everything into our equation here. And I'm going to end up with a change in boiling point of 0 0.978 degrees Celsius. So that's the change and boiling point is going to go up. The old boiling point of water was 100 so I just need to add on this change and I'll find a new boiling point for water of 100.978 degrees Celsius which we could really just round up to 101 degrees Celsius and there's our final answer. And so that's colligative properties, including freezing point depression and boiling point elevation.